Hi folks, Frank here. Welcome back to the shop. We're still working on the Cub Cadet forklift conversion. So if you missed uh, previous episodes, we're taking a 50 year old Cub Cadet garden tractor and converting it to a forklift. So this is the tractor. The frame's been stretched about a foot. Put the seat on backwards, move the dash to the rear here installed the necessary controls and power steering to drive this tractor backwards. It's a hydrostatic drive. And we've worked, started working on the mast for the forklift. So this is going to be a single stage mast with a uh, six foot free lift. The set of forks I ordered are rated at 3000 pounds. So we'll, when they come, we'll fasten them to the carriage which will ride in these tracks. We'll mount the whole thing on the back of the tractor here. We have room for it right here. And so that's the plan. And here's my Brutus, one of my two German Shepherds who's always in here with me. Just came in and out of the rain. It's kind of a cold and rainy day today. You'll see throughout my videos that my two German Shepherds, this, this is um, Brutus, or Brew Brew, as we call him. And Butchie is our, is our other German Shepherd, and they come in the shop frequently, except when I'm welding <laughs> or using the plasma table. A couple things they don't care for. Uh, they're in here checking up on me pretty regular basis. I think I heard Butchie come in. Oh, here he comes now. So he's been out in the rain too. It's all rainies outside, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You're all wet. Uh. All right. Been good boys. These guys are brothers. They're about six years old. They're purebred German Shepherds. All right, so we're going to mount the mast here in this space between the, the rear wheels at the rear of the tractor. And one of the things we're going to work on this episode is the uh, frame member, which is going to support the mast and make room for that. I'm going to cut this section of the fender out. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I should just cut all this taillight wiring out. I'm getting in my way here.
This is my CAD cardboard aided design methodology here. So I think I've got a couple of a couple of edits to make to it. I think this is a good position and I think this is a good position and proportion for the tilt cylinder support here. With a hole or a pin about there. And then back here, this is the support for, I think this line can come down like that. Of course, the pin for the mast is here. So this is my dimensioned template. And I think I got all the dimensions on here I need. Next step is to get it into Fusion 360 and model it so we can cut it out on the plasma table. This is the first time I've cut uh, material this thin, uh, 16th of an inch. So I upped the feed rate to 85 inches a minute and it looks like it did uh, quite well. There's very little, if any, dross on the back of this. So, all right, we'll go try this out on the tractor.
All right, so it's a good thing I did this because I see one spot I missed. And it's a notch for a bolt right here. Yeah, so I want to do a notch for that. Everything seems to fit okay. I'm going to use the two axle bolts here through it. I'll need to put in longer bolts. I think that's a decent fit. It'll of course be like this. Oh, look who's here. Where's Brew Brew? Huh? Where's Brew Brew? Brew Brew! Where's your little brother? Huh? Where's your little brother? For being a good boy, give me that paw, give me that paw. There you go. Alright. Maybe Brew Brew will come in later, huh? You want to go get him? No, Daddy. Okay, so this this um, <laughs> weird-looking piece of metal. <laughs> um, I have to say it cut great. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be drilling the hole here and the hole up here. This will be for the tilt cylinder attachment. This will hold the bottom of the mast. And of course, this is just 16th, I think 16 gauge. Um, the actual piece we made out of 3 8 inch uh, mild steel or um, a, a, A36, ASTM A36, structural low carbon steel. So uh, this, there's I just saw two minor things that I want to change. One is I want a little dimple here to clear the bolt, which holds that bolt actually holds the hydrostat in the frame. I've got these two holes here, which will take the bolts for the axle that hold the um, axle extension on to the transaxle. And then I have a little, I mean, it's just an eighth of an inch interference with, you know, there, these two bolts here and this one is on a bolt circle that goes around the axle housing. So um, I'll attach there. This one I'm going to miss the bolt. Yeah, I mean, yeah, unless I extend it and take yeah, I don't think I want to do that. Uh, 
Yeah. I think I'm just going to make a clearance, a little clearance notch here and a clearance notch here. Go back into Fusion 360 and then I think I'll be ready to cut the three quarter, the three eighths inch pieces. So these notches clear the foot pedal and the foot rest support. So, all right, we'll come back, maybe cutting a bigger piece. And I'm getting ready to cut the uh, 3 8 inch mass support frame. We'll see how this goes. I'm hoping I've got all the kinks worked out using the cardboard. I mean four versions or five versions of the cardboard template and then that piece of 16th inch um, sheet metal piece. Because the issue is the cardboard goes places the metal won't go. So that's the issue with using the cardboard as your final template because it doesn't really hold its shape as well as a piece of sheet metal does. So that's why I wound up making the, the thin sheet metal template as well. It's a lot less expensive than, than this stuff. So um, we're going to go ahead and cut our first one out of this piece of steel.
right, so it looks like I have a little more interference here than I planned for, so I need to enlarge this notch, probably, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, something like that. as much as a quarter of an inch. So I'm putting two bolts through this new frame member into the axle housing and the existing bolts are two and a half and this is a three inch and unfortunately I only have one on hand that's three inch. So I'll have to get another, some more. Yeah, these won't engage. But those two certainly add rigidity. You know, in, in hindsight, I mean, I potentially could have drilled a hole through here and used this bolt as well. The problem is, this bolt goes into the hydrostat and uh, a bracket on the hydrostat actually and it is extremely difficult to align with the hydrostat. It, it's always a hassle getting this bolt. If you take it out, getting it back in is always a problem without cross threading it or damaging it. Some, anyway, so I decided just to go around it and uh, you know, maybe not the best decision from a strength standpoint, but I think I have so much, I mean, I'm only going to be picking up, this thing's only going to be carrying about 1,500 pounds, the 500 pounds, 400 pounds for the mast, and 1,000 pounds uh, of cargo. So, you know, I, I think this piece of metal is plenty strong, and I'm going to put some additional bolts through this new plate into the frame and through the frame further forward up here I'll put some bolts through this and we'll bolt this to the frame in a, at least a couple more spots so that'll you know provide the attachment to the frame and this particular bolt here won't won't matter okay it looks like it looks like this plate is on straight I need to cut another one.
these are shorter. All right, this is a shorter bolt. All right, the two sides of this transaxle take different length bolts. Okay, let's go replace the... I went to the hardware store and got the longer bolts, but I forgot that the these are for the other side. This side has different length bolts. It's because the casting is different on this side of the, of the differential. So, but I've got the longer bolt I need for the other side, so we'll go put that in. So is it, this is the difference between the bolts on the two sides. This is the other side, this is this side, and it has to do with the way the axle housings are cast and the, dis, and the differentials assembled. So the hydrostat, I think the, the difference is the hydrostat's off-center a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. So the axle casting on this side's a little thicker. It looks like it's, you know, almost an inch thicker. But anyway, I've got the longer bolt for this side. This, this one wasn't really even engaging the thread. So you can see I got one about a half an inch longer. That bolts the support to the frame solidly and we will add some more bolts to the to the frame this reinforcement as well all right folks that's it for this week uh, got a lot accomplished with the installation or at least partial installation of these two support frames that support the mast and as I mentioned earlier the bottom sections here will have a bolt or a pin going through them that will support the bottom of the mast. This little drawbar will come off. And then these top sections here will weld a pin to that will come out and support the cylinder which will tilt the mast. So I decided I decided to cut these support members out of one piece as opposed to cutting a straight piece and then welding on you know two two other lobes for example up and down which would have been much more efficient use of material but I wanted to have a single monolithic piece of metal to you know ensure the best strength and reliability not to depend on my welds uh, so that was the choice there and and the material though it is expensive it's there are times when you just need to bite the bullet and do it right so that's what i've done see the two so you can see the support frame here the two two support frames the mass will go between the 
the two lobes at the bottom, tilt cylinders between the two at the top on either side of the of the dash. And then we'll come forward here on this reinforcement member and put a couple bolts through the frame. I'm not sure exactly where yet. I need to get under and look and see where we have where there's space. But we'll get the mag drill out and we'll drill some holes here and put some bolts through. Probably probably only need like two bolts. Uh, you know, two three eighths inch bolts would be plenty to support any stresses on that. Almost all the weight is going to be on this rear axle on these axle bolts. And uh, we'll put another we'll put another bolt through the frame here. There's a boss welded to the frame, so we'll put a bolt through here. We'll drill a hole. Same on the other side here. Uh, that'll tie the top of the tie it further up on here. So we've got a few more things to do to get that support frame fully, fully mounted. We'll come back next week, continuing work on that. And uh, I don't know that I mentioned that I got the hydraulic cylinder. It came uh, yesterday, so it's here. And I haven't really done anything with it yet, but we've got some work to do here on the mast. I need to probably... When I take these two, these two support, at least this support off, I'm going to move this support to the back, and that will support the, be able to give me a, give me something to U-bolt the cylinder to down here. I need to make a support for the bottom, a couple of brackets with a, I think that's a one-inch pin, so that that'll be supported on the bottom by a pin, and then. Uh, There'll be two U-bolts around the cylinder, a couple spots, and then we'll reinforce the frame instead of having this go straight across, which this was temporary. We'll have the, it, the support come up, over, and back down, which will give clearance for the hydraulic cylinder, the lift, to go, to go up and down. All right. I haven't decided whether I'm going to use chain or cable but I'll use two whichever one I choose and I think right now I'm leaning toward um, wire rope uh, as the lift but I would use two of them a pair of them uh, so that you have you know a safety factor so no one break no one rope would break and and drop the load and they would both be sized to carry the load complete load independently won't be any problem. So something like um, quarter or five sixteenths wire rope would work fine. Pulley on top of the cylinder, and uh, so that'll I think that'll work. Um, you know most most uh, most forklifts have a chain, a pair of chains, and just looking at um, looking at them. You know, I'm. Uh, it just looks like it's a little more complicated than I need in terms of being able to assemble it myself, um, and probably the wire rope would be a lot cheaper than the chains. So, and and probably easier to deal with because I can get the pulleys for the wire rope. The pulleys for the chain are like flat pulleys. I'm not sure I can get something that would carry the load. Maybe have to would, might have to machine something like that. But in any case, we'll address that when we get to that point. We're you know a little bit away from there yet, but we've made good progress. And for all you guys that were concerned about the tire direction, when I put these two tires back on, I'll be sure to swap the sides. So that uh, I know you've been waiting a long time to see that happen. Um, at least two months probably since uh, most of the comments on on that. And as I mentioned back when I responded to the comments. Um, yeah, I mean, I told you I would do it eventually. Just waiting for the time when I had to take them off anyway. So that was the only reason for the for not swapping them sooner. Okay, we'll come back next week. Keep working on this. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to getting the mast mounted on here. Um, 
So I appreciate everybody watching. Leave a comment, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. <laughs> and we'll see you next week.